Hello and welcome to Smith's. I am a wood cutting fanatic who loves to run a chainsaw. I run alcohol chainsaws, ported chainsaws, I race chainsaws, and I even run the occasional video. Now remember, I cannot do this without you. You're everything to the channel, so please remember, subscribe, give that thumbs up, leave that comment. Today, we are going to have a lot of fun. So how you doing? Everybody's headed for Solfest, and I had a different destination. You recognize this shop? Saws everywhere. And there's... Uh, 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 oh, wait, 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 where is he get? Uh, uh, uh. You know, the hidden guy behind Whoa, the camera, hey. the hidden guy behind the camera back there. <laughs> get me on camera. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me. There he is. See? We get... We get them from the backside. <laughs> we're gonna go play with the 400 here. So we're gonna head out to the property and make you guys some video. Yeah, the Briscoe 400. It's hard to even call it a steal anymore. It's a Briscoe saw. <laughs> but yeah, I've been hanging out here. My truck broke down on the way here. Had to come he had Briscoe had to come rescue. Uh, luckily, I was within like a half hour of his house. So he came out and rescued me. It wasn't a big deal. The alternator fried and the battery was pretty much toast. So we replaced the alternator and the battery and the belt. So everything seems to be working now. But we're getting ready to head up and head out to the other property and try out this 400. And I don't know what else we're going to get into here today. We're just hanging out and chilling. Yeah, you know, uh, it's still daylight out. We'll so take, we got time. We'll take the sticker up. 4910 with us too. Sticker? Yeah, that needs uh, a little. He just named the saw stickers. You heard them, right? It's stickers. Well, it sticks out from the other one. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess let's load up the saws and. Too late. I got you now. <laughs> Everybody's used to seeing this. <laughs> it is what it is. Alrighty, we're going to go have fun. All right, so we're out here at the infamous piece of property that briscoe comes out and does work on and so forth it's the family it's the family the property. family property and we're gonna run a few saws make some cuts so it looks like the 400 is up first now we are going to be cutting some softwood and for those of you who might be haters of this type of content cutting softwood just remember for guys like us it is a complete waste of wood to make cookies out of your perfectly good firewood. This is softwoods, stuff will never burn in our wood burners. So that's why we like to play with it mostly. Good it's junk. Camp, good it, for campfires. It's good for campfires and all that stuff and playing. That's the purpose of this wood. And that's also, why we cut free, on it. Yeah, it's there. free. <laughs> but uh, like you, you'll need your- I don't feel bad cutting cookies on this. I feel bad when I do it to a nice piece of oak. Yeah, yeah, I hate cutting cookies on a nice piece of oak. It just. I feel like I'm wasting all that good firewood. You know what Ch I mean? Cherry really bugs me when I cook cookies mm -hmm. on cherry. So there we go. We got some softwood. And we're going to have some fun here. All righty. Oh, my God. 
Side's a little smaller than this side, but this one has the RPM. That one has the brute torque. <laughs> So there we go. We were having a little fun here. Uh, now, if you picked up on it, the 400 versus the 500. The 500 had the torque, but the 400 had the RPM. So in this kind of a situation with this wood, RPM will win. Uh, but if we had this at like a 36 inch piece of wood or something, there's no way the 400 would keep up. And it's softer wood. This is, this is a very easy wood to cut. So it doesn't take a whole lot of torque to pull the chain through this type well, of wood. Aggressive chain will lug them down a little. Yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll aggressive chain will pull. Well, aggressive chain will pull it down, but yeah. you try to put an aggressive chain in, like you can make in this stuff, and then you try to put that chain on oak, you 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 end up, you know, chatter or something. 
but but anyway i like this stuff because it doesn't tear your chains up yeah this is great for just testing and stuff testing. But the 400 to me is the one that stood out among them all. The Echo is super impressive because it's pulling as much power as I uh, I see a lot of 70cc saws run. Because he's running 3H chain on that saw now. He took it from 325 up to... 65 class. Yeah. That's a, that's a good saw for a 65cc range. And it's only 50. But then you got the, uh, what is that? Is that a Mark II? Yeah, that's a 550 Mark II. Yeah, the Mark II. Off my Mark I. I really like that Mark II as well. That's but six to, yeah, but to This me, one's not been to the dyno yet, but that Mark, yeah. Mark II is... Me, good. personally, the 400 is the one that stood out the most. The problem with that 400 is there's really no class for that saw. You have to run it in a class... I'm running an 85. Yeah, he's running an 85 cc class. And what is it? 67? 67. 67. It's 67 cc. You know, I hadn't, I didn't really stop and take a notice to the property here. She's nice and quiet. Is that a, is that a boat launch? That is a dock. That, dock? Uh, the swamp flooded and I lost a few barrels out there somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. I think the 400 was the star of this show. The Mark II and the Echo as well. Man. They're each. Could you imagine that Echo on 325? Yeah, the Echo on 325 would be. I mean, that's just. Are you going to run 9-pin? <laughs> uh, that 7-pin that's on there for the 3.8s is the same physical mm -hmm. diameter as an 8-pin 325. I'm pretty happy with the way it's performing right now for just being mm -hmm. hodgepodge. I just built it the other day, and I did some crazy, funky, experimental stuff in there. It's mm. probably going to hang a ring and blow up, but that's all right won't be the first one i killed well we're going to keep having adventures here who knows what else is going to get added onto this video stick around yeehaw <laughs> it's normally nice and smooth through here yeah off road in a one ton We, it's kind of evening, but uh, we got into some playing with some chain on the 500i, and you know, we made a couple of test cuts. I think it's only like three cuts, but the one of the chains is mine, one of them is his hand file, and one of them we adjusted the raker on his hand file. But my chain, we weren't happy with the way it was performing out there. So we came back, adjusted the rakers, and then made a test cut with it here. That's basically what went on. But I'll show you those three cuts, and I don't know what we're going to get into next. Alrighty. <laughs> All right, so Charlie's going to show me some things about the lathe, and they might be stupid questions, but I'm probably going to have a couple of questions. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're going to go for long for the ride. So now, right now, we're going to talk about this thing here. So I, my dial indicator. Yeah. So you got that, that, that's a magnet mount. It just it just sticks on here. Yeah. And 
normally it does. Normally? Yeah. Probably got something behind it. So whenever you move it, you can see. What I'll do is I'll come in, I'll lock this down, I'll free this up, and then I'll put a lot of pressure. And what holds this from, you know, tight to this is the pressure that you got on the combustion just, chamber. Just friction. Yep, just, just friction. Um, and then what I'll do is when this is, I'll make sure that I, I everything, I always check, make sure you free roll. But when that's, when this is turning, I'll come in and I'll just barely kiss that. You'll, you'll hear it like tink. Mm -hmm. And then I'll know, okay, that's my zero. So then I can come over here and turn this around to my zero. And then I'll back this out so we're not cramming it into it. But then say if I want to take 10 thousandths off, I can move this, you know. Yeah. You, you move it. I got a lot of play in this, but you, you know, move it to your 10 thou. You can do your, your cut and then you just... I don't want to take another 10 thou. It just gives you an idea. And a lot of times, I'll mark, I'll take a sh Sharpie, and you'll, I'll, you'll go, always want to mark, because these tabs could be different thicknesses. So you always mark one of your tabs, just so you can keep an idea how much you're... Anyway, I'll come in here and I'll take a reading on this, and then as you're doing your passes, not only are you reading that, you can come back to that same tooth and they'll, you know how much you're taking off on that ear but that's what i use that look how much i had to cut off some of these yeah i see and this one looks like it's steel yeah the, it, if you can the steel mandrels are better they hold up better uh they stay truer because after a while clamping on it like some of these i made dual dual sided i you know there's two different bores but after a while of clamping on these they start uh the aluminum mushes and they start not, off. yeah it starts not being as accurate the steel ones especially these ones i made out of like like this was hydraulic cylinder this stuff's tough as all get out the mandrels i make out of that are darn near indestructible and some of these some of my mandrels are made out of hardened like dozer and tractor pins and i just threw them in the wood stove just you go to try to cut them and they just squall and not cut. So I threw them in the wood stove, let them sit in the coals overnight, and then dug them out the next day, and then they cut like butter. <laughs> <laughs> Playing, you know, with a lathe, doing stuff, it, it gets addicting. The next thing you know, you're putting cases in there and building strokers. And it's, it's the infamous number. grinding station. Yeah, it's trashed. You can clean that thing up, organize it all, and then two port jobs later, it looks just like that. I'm seeing, what, 15 different grinders total? Man, I still end up changing bits. 15 of them. I got lots of different air powered ones I use too. You buy the big containers of bits. I'm starting to use more of the single cuts why don't you uh, tell YouTube world what your history is because you didn't always build chainsaws I've always repaired them <laughs> I've, I've repaired small engines since I was a little yeah but I'm talking your racing history oh I've built race engines did that for years drag like what, race engines, drag race engines yeah, the big mud, mud boggers like, like what kind of horsepower are we talking about like in small blocks I don't know, it was pretty easy to get 450 horse out of a small block. Yeah. And I've had some that were like 550 or so, but big blocks were like 750 or so. I used this to hold a lot of the tooling for that way, then I got a bunch of crap in here. Yeah, yeah, right there. This is the kind of tool post I have. Yeah. Compared, you can have that one if you want it. Compared to the type of tool post this he has. This an old Atlas. Yeah, this is the kind mine uses. Oh boy. I gotta ship 49 that. 10. I gotta ship that one off to Norway. 49 10. Uh, no, this Wait. one's 501. 501. Yep. That's a 49 10, and that one's a 501. Another 49 10. 
I had 12, I sold a bunch. Got another 501 hanging up on the wall over there. Yeah. 440, there's the 4310. That's my second 4310, the other one's sitting out in the truck. I'm gonna take that down this off fast. People don't, everybody thinks this shop's big, it's really small. No, it's, how big is it? It's maybe 23, It's I, th I think when I first moved in here like 20 some years ago, it was back in 04, I think we measured it. I, I want to say, I think it's like 23 by 24. Maybe it was 21 by 23, I can't remember. But, I mean, these are only like, what, six and a half foot. I, mean, I think I'm going to call that it for this video. Don't know how long it's going to be. I got a feeling it's going to be a little bit of a longer video. But hey, there's a good fun day with Mr. Briscoe know. himself, the famous that. guy. The guy you never see in front of a camera. Ever. I ain't famous. I'm just a freaking redneck that can soft and front on chainsaws. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.